After a win in Fort Lauderdale, Mike Perry calls out Kobe Covington. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score this contest 29-28 for the winner by unanimous decision, Platinum Mike Perry! Any thoughts on what might be next here as we move forward in 2019? Well, I heard Darren Till got himself into a little trouble there. I'm trying to make a jump in the ranking system, trying to get my hands on Kobe Covington. These guys fight once a year, it seems like. I'm fighting so many dang times, I can't even keep count. That's 18 in the past four years. Let's get it, baby. 19 coming soon. On a recent episode of the Believe You Me podcast, Michael Bisping talks about Brock Lesnar leaving WWE for UFC. <clears throat> Former UFC heavyweight champion uh, Brock Lesnar kicked off the show. Uh, his advocate Paul Heyman started the match saying that they were going to get out of there early if they weren't going to main event the card and they were heading on a flight to Las Vegas where uh, they ultimately respected uh, his client, something along those lines, alluded to coming back to the UFC and reports were right after the show UFC is targeting Brock Lesnar versus Daniel Cormier for their August card. Mm. Very cool. So Brock Lesnar, he got beat. I saw that DC did tweet something like, you suck Brock Lesnar or something <laughs> like that. Um, all right, well, that's good. I'm happy for uh, DC. He deserves it. You know, he's been... Um, you know, we know what he's achieved. I don't need to go through it. He's, he, he, DC's the man. He's a great ambassador for the sport. He coaches a kid's team. You know, DC's just a genuinely good guy and a great fighter and an asset to the UFC. So I, I want to see him get those big paydays. You know, it's weird. People talk shit. Oh, it's bullshit, man. He's holding up the division. Um, but it's natural. Would you not want to fight an easier fight for three, four times the money that somebody else may generate? You know, come on. And then, if he wants to, he can still fight those people after he beats Brock Lesnar, which I'm mm. assuming he will, with, with relative ease. And then he can take on the Stipe's, the Dos Santos's, the, the Francis Ngannou's. That's one I'd love to see. But, uh, yeah, thoughts, Lewis? Doggy? Baby boy? Uh, what a baby boy? What a doggy? Um, I, don't, I mean, look, how much is he holding up division? When was his last fight? It wasn't even that long ago. Uh, November against Derek yeah. Lewis. In November, it's not holding up the division. I mean, it's a you know a few months. Uh, you know, I've spoken all about this a lot. So have you. You have clear criteria. You know, if he wants to wait for a big fight and they're negotiating shit, it's been a few months. You know, if it's been a year, yeah. if it's been sixteen months, eighteen months, and you're like, God damn, dude, fight! What are you doing? But it's a few months, and he has every right to to field the options and to see what's out there now. Separately from that, and having nothing to do with Daniel Cormier. I'm just over Brock. Uh, you know, he got busted for steroids the last time, I, I believe, right? If I'm not wrong about that. Yep. Um, so something, it was, I guess it was something weird about that in the Marcon fight. I don't believe that he's a clean fighter. I don't believe that there's any upside besides the fact that you're going to get a few more eyes on the sport for that pay per view. I think that anybody at this point, anybody who's aware, anybody who's ordering a pay per view because Brock Lesnar is there is already aware of the UFC. So the potential of turning those fans over and turning them into hardcore fans i think you've sort of you've squeezed that enough you know and I, mm. it's just sort of it's back it's a backward step in my opinion i think we should be looking at putting the best the absolute best fighters that have given their lives to mixed martial arts um forward and giving them the bump and the ufc can create a star out of almost anybody that can win fights and that's what we should yep. be looking for well well i totally agree with what you're saying and it's kind of an interesting one because as you say I mean, Lesnar's fought a few times in the UFC now. He was the champion. He got destroyed by Cain Velasquez. Uh, last fight, he beat Mark Hunt. But we all know Mark Hunt can't wrestle. On the feet, he can take out anybody on his on, the, on his best day. But wrestling-wise, he was always going to lose that fight if, Mark, sorry, if Brock Lesnar used his wrestling, which he did. Then, of course, he tested positive. As we all know, you nor I. I'm a fan of anybody that does that. Um, but you're right, what were the pay-per-view numbers for UFC 200? I know they were big, but it was UFC 200. Yeah. You know, so, and as you say, anybody that's going to watch Brock Lesnar in the UFC now, if they followed him there every time, you think, you've got to think that they kind of know that he's not very good at MMA. Yeah. It's you just short, you know it's I mean? short-sighted. I get you'll get him another 500,000 pay-per-view buys that you wouldn't have had. But at what cost? You know, you, you have uh, got Harrington. Well, it looks like Lesnar's minimum's about a million pay-per-view buys. 
Yeah, I believe it. He's huge. Like, you know, he will always sell pay-per-views very well, but I just don't know, you know, how much is that worth it when you, you sort of, you want hard, I don't you want to, in my opinion, you want to turn people that don't know what the sport is into casual fans. You want to turn casual fans into hardcore fans, right? That's sort of like the, the process and the, the, the life of the MMA fan. And I just don't know if you're turning casuals into hardcore fans by getting Brock in anyone. I don't know. Good. But, 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 but why wouldn't that work? Why wouldn't that work? If, if you know the 500,000 pay-per-view buys come in and the rest of the card is awesome, let's say it's you know, a stacked card like a lot of those monster cards are, and these people watch and they're like, holy shit, this is my first time buying a UFC pay-per-view. I'm watching the next one because this was fucking awesome. Yeah, okay, Brock Lesnar got destroyed, but it was actually really cool seeing what someone small like Daniel Cormier could do to him and all these other great fights. And as you say, that is part of the... Um, the allure of Brock Lesnar for the UFC to put him on the card and paying the money that you know, no doubt he gets paid, which I'm assuming is a lot. Yeah, I mean there are there's n- a number of people there. I think that number is smaller and smaller each time they bring Brock Lesnar back. You know, and you know who knows? This is all just kind of hearsay. You know, us talking out of our ass, but I just don't see the the upside in that. I think that they should be really focused on forget the freak show fights, forget all the the ones the the CM Punks and all the guys that you know. It's just bells and whistles. So what's great about the sport is that it's the greatest sport in the world. You don't need the bells and whistles. On episode 129 of the Below the Belt podcast, Brendan Scubb exposes boxing's Big Baby Miller's team and talks about his failed drug test. Remember that MSG fight with Anthony Joshua where the pre-sale was like the record sales for a boxing event? So that was supposed to happen? Here's the thing about that little weird just so the fans know what's going on here. so when they say fastest boxing fight to ever sell at Madison square garden you realize that eddie hearn's team is buying all those tickets oh they buy a majority of them before they drop wow so there's only a few to the public to sell and then they sell them at a higher price we carry on shady yes. all right so for that fight he's supposed to fight joshua and it turns out that last week he popped for a test in march 20th for they said it was First of all, it's Voluntary Anti-Doping Association, and they said it was adverse findings. It turns out it's this thing called GW1516 that he says, and his team said that we didn't do anything, no only take anything at all. And then, so this is what the description of that thing does. Increases. One of the primary benefits of GW1516, for sure get easier to say, is that it increases aerobic power and endurance for obese and elderly. Lift, yeah. lift for the world breaks... Lift for the world breaks down how the drug is used by athletes to gain unfair advantage. That's just a website for lift. GW51516 is not a SARM, selective androgen receptor modulator. Uh, rather, it's a proliferate activated receptor. Okay. Basically, it helps you sit last longer, push harder, stronger. Okay. So, so this can help you not just with cardio running, but also in the weight room since you can push out another rep and work out for longer without becoming tired. Yeah. How do you get this shit? So that was one thing that happened. And then his team says that he was innocent. He didn't only take anything. So they sure. wanted to test again another sample. That his sample. Team, his team was like, let's test again. Yeah. That means his team, he lied to his team. Probably. It was like, I guarantee I didn't do anything. Like, let's test again. He's like, then yeah, no doubt. Let's do the second again. test came back with HGH and EPO. Hey, man. All right. Big Baby. And I like the guy. Met Big Baby. One of the nicest guys in the sport. If you're going to cheat on a drug test, at least attempt to pass the fucking thing. I assume you guys are on shit, but come on, don't just, just don't mock the whole fucking testing. At least, you know, kind of go about and be like, what the, you know, at least do shit where you, this is like if they took a guy randomly out of Gold's gym and test him, I expect this shit to, all this, HGH, this new SARMs, and then no, fucking, it's not a SARM, but, you know what yeah. I'm saying, all this shit, EPO, of course you get EPO. tested, bro. And what's this is video here? This is after he admitted fault. So this is his post on Instagram. Um, this is your boy Big Baby Miller here. Um, a lot can be said right now. I'm gonna get straight to the point. Um, yeah, it's Instagram I messed up. Um, I messed up. I made a bad call. Um, well, three bad calls. A lot of ways to handle the situation. I handled it wrongly, and I'm paying the price for it. I missed out a big opportunity. About $3 million and price. There's five. I'm hurting on this side. You know, my, my heart is, is bleeding right now. But you in shape. My family, my friends, my team. But that cardio, my right. supporters. But I'm going to own up to it. 
I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to correct it. And I'm going to come back better. And I'm humbled by the experience to understand. I don't know about better. Things, man. And, uh, I'm going to leave it as that. You know, I love you guys. And I, and I appreciate you guys out there. And, you know, fighters, we go through a lot. And I don't want to make it a bad name for ourselves. You can stop and, it, Jen. All right. Here's the thing. All right. Cool, man. I accept it. What a, that? I mean, TJ doing the same thing. These other guys come out the same thing. What I don't like is when guys go, I, dude, I don't know how that got there and just assuming that the general audience is stupid. That's where people go, dude, fuck off, man. But when guys come out and go, yeah, I fucked up, man. I was fighting Anthony Joshua. Cardio, I wish he would have done this. Cardio is not my thing. It's not my forte. I'm big baby Miller. So I decided to try and gain an advantage. Biggest fight in my life. If I beat him, my life changed forever. So I did some EPO, a little HGH, anything thing where I get fucking tested. I took this other thing I probably shouldn't have took. I fucked up. I was insecure in my abilities to beat the best in the world. That's what happened, man. My bat. See you next time. Done. Cool. See you, man. All good. It's the David Letterman route. Remember when David Letterman got, with, there was all the rumors, all that shit, and he came yeah. out like, yeah, listen, I did have sex with, those, that, with that girl. Yep. I fucked up. My bat. I'm going to deal with my wife. I'm going to take it from there. But all the rumors, stop now. I did have sex. People go. Uh, uh, yeah, he said he did it. Moving on. The problem is when you go, I was dick pills at a gas station, man. No, I didn't do shit. Oh, it's pulsing. Dude, just do, just address it straight on. You're good. Like this, I'm a, I was a big maybe Miller fan at, already. Was he going to beat Joshua? Probably fucking not. Huge underdog. I don't know what the odds were. Huge underdog. Same underdog fights that you got on that ESPN, that shit show. So I'll take it. TJ's thing, yeah, I fucked up, dudes. All right, what, what, how much do you want to th- kick a guy when he's down? When they come out and go, yep, I did it. All, all society can do, all the public can do is go, all right, well, there you go. He admitted it. Let's move on. What else you got? Uh, like I said, if this. you've ever met Big Baby, great guy. Fun guy, huge personality. Good dude. Yeah. He's not, he's not a terrible person because he did EPO or he was had some self-doubt, so he thought he had to take HGH. All right, so when this happened, you know, they immediately pulled that license after the March 20th test, and then the other test came out, but then his promoter, who she is? Was, she's a girl. Uh, is it? It's not, uh, before I go too hard in the paint. What? Okay, Sarah keep going. Fina. Okay, keep going. Keep going. Uh, she was claiming, she was insinuating that it was sort of because he's an African American, they're more harsher to him. And on top of that, since she's the one that's promoting him, they're part on her as well. She's implying because she's a female in a male dominated sport. You know, you gotta come with some spin. No, you got you got this hot. And then it gets funny too. Three times, Jarrell Miller's promoter forced to apologize for her. you should suck his dick. Twitter round. Twitter rant after Anthony Josh about a scrap wow. It's actually really funny too. So there's some of the tweets. This guy <laughs> He's probably exhausted after his drug treatments. She goes, You're probably exhausted from being fucked in the ass. Oh wow, she's a professional. Know, right? Then this person put they should they should ban him and you should suck his <laughs> dick. Scroll down, what does she look like here? Oh, I have a picture. Interesting. She looks better in a different picture, but Yeah, that's not the way to defend your, your client. That's just not the way to go, man. Especially when he's popped for She said three. she was going through a lot and she kind of like snapped. Um, and this is what she said after everything. My statement regarding race was taken off context. Of course, he didn't test positive because he's African American. I felt that the backlash he was receiving was more than any other. Not true. Go to TJ Dillashaw. Go to John Jones. Go to anyone who tests white, black, Mexican, Brazilian. You test hot, people go south on you fast. Her comparison was uh, Ortiz for popping and then Canelo popping twice and then them being still signed. Canelo? Uh, maybe Mexican people? Hold up. Canelo got it awful. Canelo got it really bad because the Mexicans thought he was giving Mexicans a bad name because he went, I got it from eating tacos in Mexico. Mexico, what the, what the fuck? No, that's not where you got it. You got it because you're fucking injecting needles in your ass. Then Americans went, oh, fuck, he tests positive. But they're not going to drag him over the coals. The problem here is this is Big Baby's not that big of a name. He's not that uh, well-known house name. He was getting this huge opportunity. So now they, this is such a black eye for him because his first big opportunity, now he's known as a steroid guy, and he's 300 pounds. This is why it sucks for him. So when she goes, it's different because, no, what are you talking about? No, no, Canelo's body of work got him over that. 
Uh, who Ortiz, Luis yeah. Ortiz? They said because they got licensed and he, they took away Jarrell's license. But as far as public outcry, of course, yeah, everyone got, again, everyone got messed up. He's think of the level of hate Canelo gets, whether he tests hot or not, because he's in the public eye. He gets uh, hate more hate on a Monday afternoon than Miller has gotten his entire career for testing hot. It, it's a terrible comparison. And also, it's so unprofessional. Her saying, suck my dick and all that stuff. What are you doing? <laughs> Exhausting fucking, getting fucked in the ass. Eesh. All right, moving on from this. Does anyone look at that and go, oh, I, I want her to work with me? Jesus, man. What else you got? Um, so just to close this out. But also, Miller, if you're going to do steroids, yeah, come on. Don't get tested EPO like you're taking too. shit at fucking Gold's gym. EPO. What else you got? So Joshua is now, he's going to fight someone else. They're going to announce it later this week. Sometime this week, and then he also posted this. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video. And tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.